can do that um, to start. My name is Anna Lensing, and I am the Marketing and Communications Coordinator for Easter Seals. Uh, my job is to, to share the story of Easter Seals with the community. So that is why we are here today um, with Mike and Chuck, and I will let them introduce themselves. I'm Chuck Larson. I'm with Rural Solutions. I'm a rural rehab specialist. I've uh, been doing this kind of work uh, for 30 plus years. Uh, and I travel the whole state of Iowa. Okay. I'm Mike Nisley. I'm in Iowa Falls, Iowa. Uh, I've been a professional farm manager in our office for since 82. So what's that, 38 years? Something like that. It's been a long it's been a long run. I'm a partner in the business with my brother. Uh, we started working back in the day with my dad, who now works for us. So it's come full circle. Uh, besides farm management, I also do a lot of income tax work and accounting, uh, payroll work in our office, write some crop insurance, and sell some real estate every once in a while. So kind of like the old farmers, you know, we're diverse we got our fingers in a lot of areas and uh, it helps in times like this when one area might not be doing as well as the other so. you keep yourself busy don't you mike yeah we do yep got a lot of things going on do you want to tell us how you got connected with easter seals iowa and which program you utilized yeah so my injury happened in uh, about two years ago it was memorial day weekend in 2018 and then I was in, at Craig Hospital in Denver, Colorado, uh, rehabbing. And one of my fraternity brother's wives yeah. knew a sorority sister who was uh, okay. involved with the Easter Seals. Okay. So that started the conversation. We reached out to Easter Seals and they got us involved with Rural Solutions. And uh, it was a great great marriage from the start. Wonderful. Which part of, of the programming and the whole process and, and working with Chuck was most beneficial for your recovery? So Chuck came into our home before I even returned back to Iowa Falls. And uh, he was working with April and our contractors and identifying areas that really needed to be adapted more and mainly our house was pretty well set up but we needed some changes in our bedroom and bathroom area so he was uh, key and with his vast knowledge of helping us with that um, he found a ramp for us so that i could get into the house and that was there when i came home and then he was instrumental in getting a lift put in place in our garage so that i can exit my van and get in, get on the ramp and get lifted up to our main floor level. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's where Chuck uh, was initially very helpful. And then down at the office, he also advised us on some things with my desk and then helping us get a lift put in place uh, in, my, uh, in my office also. Yeah, so I'm, you're kind of leading right into what I was I was going to bring up next, but how is the help of the Rural Solutions team and then the IRVS, how has that has assisted you in, in returning back to work and returning back to normalcy of, of working life, your new normal? Yeah, well, that's, I, I guess that's been the, the key, you know, being able to get into the office without any assistance. Um, we've got the uh, nice ramp in the back that I roll up on that, Chuck had connections with that got got it developed and uh, it's not it's a custom made lift so it's very um, unique for our situation but that's where Chuck thrives is creating custom things to fit the need um, so the lift allows me to get up onto the level of the floor of our office our office was built in the right at the turn of the century in 1903. So it's kind of, they, you know, they didn't think about wheelchairs back then very yeah. much. So. Yeah. so we're fortunate the doors are wide enough that I can get through. We did put some adaptive hinges on, on some of the doors so they swing out a little wider. Okay. 
but um, yeah, so that's that's been the big part, and and then just the support with some of the tools that that uh, they've helped me purchase. Uh, the biggest one that's allowed me a huge amount of freedom is my van and the lift that's in the van. It has a brawn uh, adaption, uh, so I can would go up the ramp and get into the behind the steering wheel and allows me to drive. Um, so I, I drive everywhere. Um, also with, uh, uh, they assisted me in purchasing a drone so that I can, um, do some field inspections with that and, okay. and uh, get, uh, you know, get a bird's eye view of some of my farm fields that I manage. Yeah. That's very and cool. Also, yeah. Yeah. It is super cool. And also, uh, a track chair, which is a kind of a wheelchair on tracks that allows me to to get around in the places where my wheelchair would normally wouldn't be able to traverse. So, okay, yeah, all sorts of little things, but it's yeah, they've been all very very helpful. Wonderful, Chuck. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how the process works for you? So, so once you get a referral to Rural Solutions, what are some things? So you can talk about what what you all did for Mike. I know he's given us the examples, but tell us about the process, kind of from start to finish. Well, in Mike's case, uh, I knew that he was in the hospital in Colorado, uh, but they were very responsive to me by telephone. Told me a little bit about the problems that they were going to have when they when Mike came home. Uh, invited me to go by the house, take a look at it. They had some contractors there that were doing some things. Uh, then we could uh, do a preliminary assessment of what uh, would Mike would need into the uh, uh, home as bathroom accessibility to the front and and so forth. Uh, the, <clears throat> the key to doing all this, of course, I knew Mike was going to be a paraplegic. Uh, but because of years of experience, I kind of anticipated a lot of the barriers that would be uh, facing him when he came home. So the first thing, of course, was the ramp, and I happened to have pieces of a ramp that worked very well for his uh, front entrance. And then we had a porch lift uh, donated that uh, would work in the garage to go into the kitchen area. All these kinds of <coughs> modifications and and uh, recommendations were based on previous experience working uh, with paraplegic uh, uh, persons. So the <clears throat> when Mike came home, then we went into more in-depth uh, design work on the bathroom and the bedroom and, and uh, installed, uh, had some of the things installed that we recommended uh, in the in the original assessment, which was kind of blind assessment, if you will, because he was still in the hospital. As things have developed, the <clears throat> new barriers and new things pop up, as, as you can imagine, for Mike, because one minute he's up and walking, and the next minute he's confined to uh, a wheelchair. So nobody's prepared for this. And so we do a lot of trial and error kinds of things to make sure that what works for Mike uh, is appropriate for him to get back to his uh, quality of life and to his profession. So we had a lot of things in the house that we worked on, as well at the same time, we were doing design work uh, for his office in uh, downtown Iowa Falls. Uh, Mike mentioned that it's a historical building, so they didn't want to change a lot of things in the building that would distract from the a designation as a historical building. But luckily, we were able to do the modifications and put the entrance uh, lift and so forth in the back in a very confined area uh, without modifying uh, the building to distract from its uh, qualifications as a historical building. Uh, luckily, I have uh, contacts with different people around the state that do um, enjoy doing modifications and design work. And uh, certainly this was a real challenge because of the limited space and, uh, and the fact that we couldn't change a lot of the structural uh, pieces of the building. 
but we got it done and it works and uh we're very i'm very proud of that design by the way <laughs> it is one of a kind <laughs> yeah yeah so what does it mean to you mike to be able to continue to work for, for your family business well it means everything i mean i've been obviously been here a long time and it's um we each have our areas of expertise where I'm the farm manager, my brother's more on the accounting side, and to be able to keep our business uh, an ongoing entity was crucial that I get back and be able to work. So uh, it, it's meant everything to be able to be here and work, not only for the good of the business and our clients, but also for me mentally to have that ability to, to know that I can still contribute. And uh, been through two tax seasons now, and they've gone very well. So we're not through with this one due to COVID. We're delaying tax season out till July 15th, so we get an extended uh, extended tax season this year. But it's yeah, 2020 is throwing you a couple extra curveballs, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then. Sure. One last question, what advice would you give to someone else who has newly experienced an injury? So I think the key for me was early on, I wrote a book by Chris Norton, who was a young man that was entered paraplegic from a football injury. And he said one of the things that he learned early on was that you can't focus on what you can't do. You have to focus on what you can do and not dwell on the things that you were able to do in the past, but be thankful for what you can do now and look forward to doing those things in the future. So it's awful hard at times to not think about going out for a jog or, you know, doing. Oh. Sorry. There you go. We're back. Also, yeah. Somebody wants to talk to me. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's easy to look, to go down that hole of, gosh, I can't do this or I can't do that, but you have to keep looking at what you can do and keep that in front of you at all the time. Um, so yeah, I feel blessed that I have the full use of my hands and arms and, um, I can drive and take care of myself and, um, be pretty independent. So that's, that's important. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, Mike, for sharing sharing some of your time with us this morning and, and being willing to share your story with, with Iowa and with the community. Chuck, do you have anything else you want to add before we sign off for the day? I just want to thank Mike uh, for uh, his testimony, and uh, uh, I really enjoyed working with Mike and his friends because they all rallied around to help him uh, put this together. Um, some of it was done before he came home, and uh, uh, they were. Uh, it was a great community to work with, and of course, uh, it's my home community, so I can brag about it. Uh, and uh, anything that uh, Mike needs in the future, I want him to think of Easter Seals as a as a possibility, and he'd be glad to continue to work, uh, even though we may not see each other frequently. We uh, are always open for that contact and involvement again. So thank you again, Mike. Yep, you bet Chuck, thank you. Thank you both guys. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, okay thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you, bye-bye.